Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific Time if you're in the United States. That is 10 a.m. if you're in Australia or around 1 a.m. if you're in the UK. I hope all you guys and girls are well. Mr. Square Peg, it's good to see you. Hope you're well. Hellforge, thank you. If you want to join the Fildo's 3D Discord server and become a Fildo, uh, click that link Hellforge has popped into Twitch chat. Uh, you can also go to the About Me section on my Twitch channel and you'll find a blue graphic in my panels on that page. You can click that to get an invite link to the Discord. We're going to be working on a game called The House in the Hollow, which you can wishlist on Steam by clicking either the link Hellforge has helpfully popped into Twitch chat or again going to the About Me section on my Twitch channel and in the panels, you will find a graphic to take you to the Steam store page. Um, remember to, if you want to find out more about me and who I am and what I do, you can go to my website, click the link in, in Twitch chat, or put my Twitch username, PhilDoes3D, with a .com on the end of it, and that'll take you to my, to my website. Uh, remember, as always, if you do miss the live streams, you can catch up at any time by clicking the videos tab on my Twitch channel. Or you can go to my YouTube channel, which is forward slash builders 3D, you know, youtube.com forward slash builders 3D, all that jazz. You know the drill, guys. Hey to you as well, Hellforge. I hope you've had a good um, a good week. Again, I didn't stream last week because I had those meetings and deliverables and all that jazz. Real life stuff got in the way. Um, so I hope you guys all had a good week and you're all staying happy, healthy and safe. We're having a bit of a, an outbreak in, in Australia with the um, human malware at the moment. So Phil's back in lockdown and Phil hasn't had a haircut for over a month. So <laughs> if I'm looking a bit shabby, that's the reason why. Coffee time as always, of course, Hellforge. You're doing good, Mr. Square Pig? That's good to hear. Juzan, hey Juzan, it's good to see you as well. I hope you're, you're doing well. So what are we doing? That's right. We are continuing with the house in the hollow. I'm just checking out uh, an image Juzan's posted in the Discord server. Actually, it looks like a, a link to a YouTube. What is this, Juzan? A commercial ad that I worked on? Oh, okay, a while ago. They never told me. <laughs> uh, literally everything you see besides the fur and the special effects and 2D stuff I made. Well, that's really cool. I'll show that on the stream just before I sign off for the day today. Uh, because Android Lost has also posted a really sweet image as well of a cyberpunkish uh, lady. And Wax Kink has posted uh, an image as well of a cursed hand mirror blade. Is this his or not? Hang on. <laughs> yes, I think it is. I'm getting confused between Wax Kink's username and his real name. Okay, I'll show those just before I sign off for the day on the stream. Thanks for popping them into the gallery. Remember guys, if you do have any work you want me to look at, post it in the gallery on the Discord server. I love showing it off on the stream. I love looking at the stuff you guys make. It's the whole reason I stream on Twitch is to encourage you to do 3D or any sort of artwork. It doesn't have to be 3D. It could be programming even. You got here early, Juzan, that's right. Um, Mr. Squarepig says, I just ordered some cookies via Amazon. What sort of cookies? Are they Oreos? Ooh, I love Oreos. I love them so much. I've actually been good, though. I've, I've not been eating as many as I, I normally do. <laughs> uh, I actually don't think I've ever bought any food products from Amazon. I mean, I bought a lot of stuff from Amazon, but not food stuff. Chocolate chip cookies. Oh, yum. Yum, 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 yum. You love those chocolate chip cookies, don't you? I remember. <laughs> So do I. Anything chocolate. But you guys know I can't eat chocolate because I break out like a, you know, like a 15-year-old. It's terrible. <laughs> yes, I do. I do remember. I remember the image you posted in the uh, Discord over a year ago, I think it was. I remember. Um, okay. So, yeah, we're going to work, continue working in the Unreal Engine, uh, working on the game The House on the Hollow. We're doing the landscape for the game at the moment. Uh, Juzan says, I just finished a vegan cookie. Oh, what's a vegan cookie? Well, what sort of cookie is a vegan cookie? Is that like, 
Like, yeah, what is what, what is a vegan cookie? Does it mean there's, there's no eggs and all that sort of jazz in it? Or I'm curious. I'm not vegan, so obviously I don't know. Um, I like my meat way too much. I know I'm one of those terrible carnivores and it's terrible for the planet, but I can't help myself. I just love meat. Um, so, yeah, well, I thought we're working on the landscape. We're going to continue. We're actually going to finish off that little scene with the uh, outhouse. Uh, Jizan says, I don't know. I'm not even vegan, but it was the best cookie I ever had. <laughs> well, fair enough. So long as it's tasty, that's the important thing. You don't have to be vegan to eat vegan. <laughs> oh, Jizan. I'm just going to have a quick drink here. <laughs> All right. As usual, guys, if you have any questions while I work, feel free to pop into chat and ask. If I can help you in any way, I'm happy to try. If you just want to say hello, that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. I get that. Okay, so yeah, we're going to continue. We're going to finish that little scene around the outhouse. Um, once I've done that, my plan was to move to the other side of the, the landscape to work on another little scene. But... I thought we might change things up. I'll see how I feel after I finish the uh, the outhouse scene. Uh, we will either jump into creating a new scene on the other side of the landscape, or we will jump into Max and work on a car. You're going to watch Phil work on a car. Shock horror. Cars and guns. <laughs> no guns, but there will be a car. Uh, so I'll either do that today, time permitting, tomorrow, if I don't do the other skeleton on the other side of the landscape so but now we're going to jump back into unreal because we're working on this little scene here with uh, the outhouse now the only change that i've made since you guys saw me working on this last week was i brought in a couple of um wooden boxes because i noticed when we did a playthrough of the level here which i don't show on stream because i can't i'm afraid <laughs> um that the when the suitcase was down here on the ground the player had to actually crouch to select the objects in here. Now that's fine because there's crouch in the game, but we decided that it may be confusing to some players who haven't crouched in the game. I know, look, I know it sounds silly, but there are some people that just don't realize these things. Uh, so we were worried that, yeah, the player would come here. They don't realize they can hit the C key to crouch. They, and they're trying to pick up these objects in the suitcase on the ground, but they weren't selectable because the player was too far away. They actually had to crouch down to to get within range of the um of the trace. The line trace is what we use to actually indicate that there's something in front of the player for them to pick up. Uh, the line trace. We could have increased the line trace, but uh, I think it looks better anyway if we just raise the suitcase by putting it on a couple of wooden boxes. Um, so that's, that's the change from last week, as well as just a couple of candles here and there, really. So now the player doesn't have to crouch. Uh, there's a couple of, um, a couple of candles in here as well, just around the skeleton. So let's finish off this scene, I guess. Uh, Jizan says, I never want to model a vehicle again. <laughs> uh, for work, I just finished modeling and texturing a semi-truck. Never again. Yeah, look, I don't generally like... I look, I know you guys like making cars and modeling them and texturing them. A lot, of, a lot of my viewers do. And guns. That's cool. You make what interests you. Um, I generally don't have an interest in modeling guns and cars. I have modeled a car before because I had to do one when I worked on the uh, Mad Max game. But um, I haven't modeled one since then, until now. Well, and we're going to be texturing it up. Actually, it's it's, it's modeled, but uh, it's going to be. T I'm going to be texturing it up in Substance Painter or Adobe Painter or whatever you want to call it now. Um, so yeah, it's modeled. We have to UV map it, and then we're going to texture it up in Substance. Hey, Android Lust, it's good to see you. What? You modeled a car? Yes, that's why you've been sneaky. You've been lurking in the background. I wasn't sure you were here. Yes, I did. I modeled, well, yeah, we're, we're going to be working on a, uh, 
1924 car. So it's not a modern car, obviously, because it's going in the game, and the game is set around the 1900s. So, well, the location is the 1900s. We haven't actually said what the what the current time period is for the player, because it could be modern times. Because once you enter the hollow, you just get trapped. But because the hollow, <laughs> because the hollow in the game is set around the 1920s and the Art Deco period. Uh, we decided we wanted a car that was of the period, so it's a 1924 era car that we're going to be modelling. One of those cars with, with the crank in the front. Can you, you know, those old old fashioned cars that used to use the crank in the front of the um the thing to start it. None of this push button business or even an app. I think you can use an app these days with some cars to start them up. How cool is that? Using an app to start your car. But yes, yes, we have a car. We will be texturing it up and UV mapping it. Copy and save. <laughs> I won't save because I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> what a surprise. But I will have a copy. <sighs> Android Lost says, I just got in. The carriage looking car? No, it's not a carriage. Do you want a sneak peek now, guys? Because I actually have it open in Max. I'll give you a sneak peek. We'll either work on it today, tomorrow, or next week, depending on how I feel uh, at the end of the stream. This is the car we are going to be texturing. Now it's not textured; it's only coloured at the moment. So don't 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 be fooled. It is not textured. It's not UV mapped yet. So we'll be doing this car. We're going to be UV mapping it in Ryzen, and we're going to be texturing it in Substance Painter. And of course, it's uh, Mr. Francis Barrett's car, which is why his license plates are called Barrett. So it's a 1924 Bugatti inspired car. I don't actually want to, yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrew Lott says it's like an old roadster, yeah, it's sort of, sort of, yeah. Helpwood says nice car. So this is, this is what we will be texturing up inside of Substance Painter. It already has partial texture here for the grill, which is just a plane um, with a texture map on it. And we're going to be baking from the high poly to the low poly. So this is actually the lower poly version of a car, I believe. Yeah. Um, the high poly version is this one, which I'll just show you by turning all these off. So that, that's the high poly version of a car. But we're, not, we're going to be working with the low poly version of the car. And what I've actually done is broken it up into sections. So what we'll, we'll be doing is we'll be texturing it up as um, piece by piece, basically. The body is all one, will be one texture. The wheels are one texture. And then the interior will be one texture. Because the car is um, quite large, it will be in the scene. So we, I, I, I thought it was best if we textured it up by breaking it into three separate texture maps as opposed to trying to do it all as one texture map because it's really too large and too detailed to try and do as one texture map. So that's the reason for that. Anyway, we're not, we're, we may work on that later, but uh, for now we're back in Unreal. Uh, Juzan says, what engine? V8? What are we talking about, Giselle? I have no idea. I know less about cars than like a, a three-year-old probably. <laughs> Smurfberry says, cars. Yes, cars, Smurf. Can you believe it? I'm working on a car. Android Lust says, they had V8s in the 1920s. Yeah, I don't think they did in the 1920s, did they? Uh, Smurf says, first, Phil uses ZBrush, then he makes cars. <laughs> All of his advice is a lie. Well, I had to have a car because the car is actually not for this part of the lance of the level. It's for the beginning part of the level. So basically what, what will happen is you will start the game not in this landscape but in another landscape uh, and you'll, the, the car is at the entryway to, uh, how, how do I describe it? It's at the entryway to a gate that you'll go through to get to this landscape. So the first thing you come across will be the car inside the grounds of the Barrett Estate. And once you pass the car, 
you get to this landscape, which has the actual building in it. So that's the plan anyway. <laughs> uh, Helpwood says, the first, uh, first known working V8 engine was produced by the French company Antoinette in 1904, really, for, the, for, for use in aircraft. Wow, I didn't know that. So there you go. The V8 engine's been around since 1904. But I, yeah, I couldn't tell you exactly what engines they had had in those little roadsters back in the 1920s. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, Andrew Loss says the help I was looking that up. Thanks. <laughs> well, there you go. So we learned something new. The V8 engine was invented in 1904. You know, it, it blows my mind sometimes when I think about things we take for granted now and assume that they're modern inventions that were really invented a very long time ago. Makes you wonder what we've actually invented, you know, in the modern age. Everything seems to have been invented hundreds of years ago. Andrew Lust is definitely not like a modern V8, though. No, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure, but bless us, they improve on these things over the years, so. All right. No. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, I'm just getting a bit distracted over here. All right. Snow says, uh, I learned that I learned that about the television. They were working on them way earlier than I thought. Mm. Well, there is no television in the in this game because I'm sure in the 1920s they didn't have TV in the 1920s. It was a radio back then. It was a big thing, and there is a radio in, in, in the building that is interactable. Okay, so I think what we're going to do here is we're going to start by placing some um, Chanel's, as you Americans call them, or Monsterias, as we call them here in this country, uh, in the background here behind the, uh, the outhouse because uh, I'm going to be placing trees through here to sort of like block the view of the outhouse anyway. So uh, because I want the player to actually come upon the outhouse from this direction. So I'm not saying that they can't get to it from the other direction, but I would prefer it's been set up for them to actually move through the level this way. Up the stairs to the outhouse. Oh, so there you go. Smurf says the prototypes of televisions existed in the 1920s. Wow. Andrew Loss says if they did have TVs in the 20s, 1920s, not many people had them. <laughs> uh, Mr. Square Peg says it was radio and theatres. Yeah. Radio, but very big in the 20s. Um, I remember the first TV. I was only a really young kid. Not the first TV that, you know, the first really big, big screen television, big screen. I mean, you know, not by today's standards, but. A big screen CRT television, the cathode ray tube, that old CRT stuff that my parents bought. Uh, and it was incredibly expensive back back in the day. <laughs> Smurf says the first example of a wirelessly transmitted image was demonstrated in 1909. Wow. See, who says that Phil Dust 3D is an educational as well? That, that's that's pretty wild, actually. They they could do wirelessly transmit an image in 1909. Wow. Uh, Smurf said it had a whopping 8x8 eight eight resolution. <laughs> well, I, I still find it funny when you watch those old black and white um, shows or whatever, movies where they're looking at a TV that's like, you know, that big, sort of square. <laughs> it's in this little box. Because we're all used to huge TVs these days. Android Dos is pretty amazing, actually. Well, minus the resolution. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, let me get some Chanel's going in here. So I want the Chanel's, I think, to be sort of... Let's put one in here. Now, I'm, I'm not going to use the uh, landscape tool. I do have the Chanel's in the landscape tool. So we could paint them in, but I want to do do them by hand because we're not going to be placing a huge amount of them anyway. So uh, doing it by hand gives me a little bit more control. So let's pull one of them in. Uh, 
we're going to scale it up because it's a bit tiny. And I guess... Now, I, I, I could be doing this in unlit mode and it might be better. Yeah, I think I will. It just might be easier for us to actually place it in unlit mode. Uh, and then we can go back into lip mode to make sure everything looks the way it should. So we'll put one there. I've got two variations and then we'll just rotate them around to make them less noticeable as being uh, copies of each other. So we have that one. Let's pull in this one. Uh -huh. Hang on. It's not letting me pull it in. Why is that? Oh, I see. We don't have two variations. This is something Unreal did, and I'm unsure why. Uh, it seems when I moved the foliage to a uh, streamed level, it duplicated a lot of the plants for some reason. Yeah, and I can't tell you why it did that. But anyway, so that's not actually a real plant we can place. <laughs> All right, so let's grab this one and duplicate it. I thought I did create two versions, but obviously not. Let's scale this one up a little bit more so it's a little bit bigger. And let's rotate it around so it's less obvious as being a copy. And, 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 and I don't actually mind it overhanging the, uh, the suitcase there a little bit. I think that should be fine. I might just move it back a little. Now, so long as I move it so it doesn't sort of intersect like that, it should be fine. People won't notice this. So long as it just overhangs the suitcase. It doesn't intersect the suitcase. Um, really, for us to sort of to frame this correctly for composition, we shouldn't have a larger one on the outside. The larger one should be on the inside. So we should sort of like be looking to go up in like a V shape or a pyramid shape as opposed to this, which is going like that. We want it to go like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place another one in here and I'm going to make it a little bit taller. So uh, we're going to duplicate it again. Move one back in here. Uh, uh, make sure it's in the ground. I have to be careful too that I don't go through the wall. So let's rotate it. Uh, I remember when I created it, I created one side that was flat-ish because I knew it would be going up against walls in the building. Uh, let's make it bigger because these things can grow quite large. And again, I have to make sure I don't intersect the wall. And because we made that one a little bigger, I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. And again, I've got to make sure I don't intersect the uh, suitcase. So I'm actually going to rotate it a little bit, I think. Maybe a bit much. Our Smith says, Oh, wait, I missed 
the data. The first wireless image transmission was 1921. The one in 1999 was transmitted over wires. But still, still 1921 is still pretty much earlier than I would have thought it would have been. Okay, so we have some Chanel's there. And again, we're, we're sort of like going for this V, so higher toward the the uh, outhouse itself and lower as we move away from the outhouse. Um, so I'm going to copy these three Chanel's. So this one, oh, not that one. This one, this one, and this one. And let's duplicate it. And move it over here. I think we will rotate them a little bit. And again, I've got to be careful that because uh, this door opens, I don't want the plant going through the door when the player opens it up. So I'm just going to make sure we position it just before the edge of that door so the door doesn't intersect it. Um, the same really goes for the leaves here. I may move it back a little bit. So when the door opens, it doesn't hit these leaves either. So it won't hit that one because the door will stop here at a 90 degree angle here. And this is far enough away that when the door swings open, it shouldn't intersect here. But it looks like we may be going into the outhouse a little bit. That, that tree leaf is okay. It sort of looks like it's coming through one of the um, holes in the boards, but this isn't so. Again, I'm just going to move it forward a little bit. And we are going to get an intersection there. So, 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 I think if I just move that up just a touch, then it should just clear the top of that door. Uh, I don't mind a bit of an overhang over the actual outhouse itself. It helps to sort of like hide it a little bit. Makes it look more interesting is what I'm trying to say, I think. Um, I may... I may, 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 may add one more, I think. So if we duplicate the shorter one... And we can move it back here. Just want to make sure that is actually in the ground over here. A little bit hard to see with all the grass going on, but. moving it. So this is one thing I've noticed with this, the Unreal Editor. And if you're anywhere near the pivot and you go to move the camera, like, you know, how you move a camera around. If, if you're anywhere within some certain range of this pivot point, it moves the object. And I do it all the time because I'm used to sort of like moving my cursor here near where I'm going to, where I'm looking at. But yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't used UE5 yet because it's in 7 beta and I don't use beta software, but I'm hoping Epic have fixed that. 
because it gets really annoying. Uh, let's move it over so it doesn't intersect the outhouse. Let's try rotating it. Maybe a rotation will work. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do a rotation and we'll move it back. Okay, I think that should be good. Again, I'm just going to double check that my door is going to clear these leaves when it opens up. So it'll clear the top. It'll clear that one and this one is far enough forward that when it swings open it'll come to about here. So we should be good. Oh my music! <laughs> Thank you for telling me, I completely forgot. Thank you, Andrew. Last year, so I got to unpause the music. Halford says, uh, I did a rough model of a V8 engine last year or so. It was pretty fun to get stuck in with all the weird shapes and all those parts, uh, and all those parts that it has. Andrew Lass says, Do you have a render or picture of it, Hellforge? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to look at it too. Okay, um, so I think the only thing left to finish this little scene off here is um, maybe some. Napweed. Uh, we have a, a flowering napweed here. Let me just pull this over. So adding a bit of bit of colour, I think might be um might be good. That's the whole reason we added the uh, the autumn coloured leaves here, just so everything didn't look quite so green. Uh, it's the same reason I've added uh, this plant here, which is called snakeweed. Uh, to add a bit of yellow, break up the green. The red helps to break up the green. And the knapweed here, which has a bluish purple flower, hopefully will help to break up the green a little bit too. So, I think what we'll do is, for that we will probably use the um, foliage tool. Yeah, I think we'll use the foliage tool. I'm just looking at that. Oh, I need to fix that. Um, just before we do that, I always like to do a save because, you know, just to be on the safe side. So let's do a save all. I can have a copy. Copy and save help, uh, help words. That's right. Um, so let's jump into the foliage drum. Because there's just something I noticed here that needs to be corrected. There it is. And we're going to go into the Select Tool. And this is floating above the surface, so we're just going to bring that down. Okay, back to the Paint Tool. Now it's been a while since I've added foliage here, so let me add that new Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It is napweed, isn't it? Yeah, napweed. Um, and I want. It's not that napweed because we've got two different types of napweed. One is uh, not flowering, and one the new one is flowering. I only brought that in recently, so. Just can't seem to find it though. Napweed Costa, Marigold, Rough Glass, Grass rather. Now why isn't it showing up? Uh, let's go with my nap. Oh no, that's searching through ones we've already got. For some reason, it is not um, 
finding it, which is really strange. Can I do that? Let me have a think about this before I do something that I'm going to regret. <laughs> I do have a backup of this project. I just always like to be spe it's, it's super specially careful with this sort of stuff with Unreal, just in case it does something it shouldn't do. Um, yeah, it look, what it looks like it's doing, what it looks like it does, is for every object you have that you're painting with, it creates another foliage type. Now it never used to do that, and why it does it now, I, I'm not really sure. Um, but that that is what it's done with every every um, foliage type. It's created a copy of the foliage you're using, and it's calling it a foliage type. You see, it's zero. None of them are being used. Uh, I don't know if it's a pointer or a reference. Maybe they do, you use they use it for some sort of instancing. I'm not sure. Hey Sniper Girl, it's good to see you. Sorry, it's just taken me a while. I've been, been doing some work for a change. Can you believe it? Uh, Sniper Girl says, I love how I'm getting the rules pop up even though I'm a mod and I have been here for quite a few times. You're getting the, 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 the chat rules popping up. I wonder why. Sniper Girl says, hi, hi in chat. <laughs> I'm doing really good, Sniper Girl. I hope you are. Sniper Girl says, wow, was Phil being good today and doing art without anybody yelling at him? That's right. I've been good. I've been good. It was only like five or ten minutes preamble this morning, at the start of the stream. Um, Andrew Doss says, I'm good. How's things? Andrew Doss says, we aren't uh, stun locking Phil too much at the moment. Stun locking, yeah. It's a good, it's a good uh, um, ex description for, for Phil when he's reading the chat. Nothing girl says to Android last time, good. Now, had a migraine earlier, ended up leaving work early today, but better now. Well, that's no good. Uh, so what have you posted here, Healthwood? Uh, it's a close-up of the engine that he worked on. Okay, cool. Let's have a look. I've got to have a look at this now because um, he didn't post it in the Discord, I don't think. Let me have a look. I, I generally like to look at all this work after uh, towards the end of the stream, but I'll make an exception. Oh, that's really cool. Um, Hellforge. I love this purple color. The actual car, the the uh, metallic paint color. I love that. Uh, the engine looks really cool. Did it take you long to model up? There's a lot of detail going on here. Uh, nice texturing work too, from what I can see. Halford says it's from mid-2019, so I didn't uh, know what I was doing back then. <laughs> I think you did a good job. Uh, like I said, I really love this, uh, the colour of the paint here. And yeah, the texturing, the texturing's nice. Maybe it looks a little clean for an engine, but I think it looks, it looks cool and I, li I like the modelling work. Down to the wiring. The wiring looks cool. Yeah, no, I think you, you, it's 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 a nice model. Um, yeah, just maybe the environment or the angle or something. It makes it look a little bit busy. I'm not sure. Adrian does says damn migraines. Yes, those migraines are terrible, terrible. I'm glad you're starting to feel a bit better though. Uh, Sniper Girl. Andrew Dust says, I remember this model, the Hellforge. Sniper Girl says, uh, yeah, I don't get them often. Last one I had was a couple of years ago, so I really, I don't really keep meds on me for it. Yeah, I'm one of those really weird people that I hate taking pills. Uh, I hate it. Um, the th yeah. I, I always have to have water or something when I'm trying to swallow a tablet because I, I just hate taking tablets, period. Uh, so I generally try and put up with a bit of pain before I have to take a tablet to try and ease it. 
because just the thought of swallowing those pills, ugh. as it is, I've got to like throw my head back after I put the pill in my mouth, had, had a bit of water, throw my head back so the thing is sort of like halfway down my throat before I swallow. Otherwise I gag. I, it's just awful. Oh, helpful. He says the first link is, oh, it's a shot of the whole project. Oh, okay. I didn't realize there were two links here. Okay. Let me have a look at this other link. Oh, okay. It makes much more sense now. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really cool, actually. I love the, um, what is it? Like a monster truck. The shape of it's really interesting. Reminds me of a mouth. Like, you know, the, the windows up here are eyes and it's a big mouth. Smiling or open. <laughs> It looks cool though. I, I love the design of it all. Yeah, and that makes much more sense to me now that I can see the overall thing. Yeah, that's cool. And I love the color. I love the paint color. Um, Snappy Girl says to help Hodge, didn't know what you were doing. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, no, I think it looks really good. I think you did a really good job actually. I like it. And uh, the detailing in the modeling is really cool too. Uh, Helpwood says that texturing work is all done in Blender. It was before I got a copy of Painter. Well, there you go. I think you did a, 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 an outstanding job, actually, considering you did it in Blender. And you didn't use a specific tool like Painter. No, I think you did a good job. Uh, Android Lost says to Helpwood, well, you made a ton of progress since 2019. A stapler truck. It does look like a stapler, actually. You're right, Android Lust. It does look, it looks like a stapler. Yeah. I still think it's cool. Uh, I think the design is really interesting. Uh, Hellboy says it's a stapler turned monster truck. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks cool. And I love the color. The color of the paint job here. This pinky purple. Love it. <laughs> Thanks for letting, uh, let me show it on the stream. Elfoy says, just one of those silly ideas. Well, I, I once, um, I don't think I've even got a copy of it anymore, but when I first started modeling, I, I modeled a parrot, a parakeet, you know, and I, I, but a really like alien looking parakeet that had these things sticking out of its head. And uh, yeah, you look back at it now and I think, well, what was I thinking creating that? But um, <laughs> hey, why not? Why not? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think um, we, 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 I've got a copy, backup copy of my project. So let's try dragging this in uh, and it looks like the engine wants to um, create a copy called foliage type, God knows why. Uh, and where did it put it? Did it even put it in there? It did. Let's try painting with it. Now, the only reason I'm a little bit um, hesitant is because It's using the foliage type and not the original mesh, whereas all the others are using the original mesh. I'm just not sure why it's done that. Uh, but we'll do a paint and we'll see how it goes. Uh, let me just wait for it to compile a shader. Okay, I'm just going to undo that because uh, I want to make it a little bigger. So let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Scale. Yeah, I, I upped the scale a bit on the plants. So 1.3 to 2.8. So we'll go, What we'll do the same, 1.3 to 2.8. What else did I change? 
I've changed the density as well by the look of it to around about 76. So let's do that as well. And anything else? something else I'm looking for here. I'm just going to try and find where it is. Placement. Oh, here we go. Oh, really? So the cull distance. I'm working with cull distance. Now this is a really useful... If, you, if you're going to be creating a landscape in the Unreal Engine, then make sure you use the cull distance here. Um, again, you guys probably know this that are used Unreal, but for anyone watching that isn't aware, maybe my viewers on YouTube particularly, um, there's a setting called Cull Distance under Instance Settings. Now, it defaults to zero and zero, which basically means anything you paint into the landscape is never going to be culled. So if you have a landscape that's two kilometers, sort of like big by two kilometers, and you're painting your grass in and you're painting your trees in, it's going to show the, that grass and those trees for those whole two kilometers that you painted in, uh, which is really going to kill your performance. Uh, so make sure you uh, use the cull distance value here. Uh, Help was talking about his uh, stakelet monster truck. It was just one of those silly ideas. Uh, also done a toaster with tank tracks because why not? Oh, well, that's right, why not? And Helpwood says, I'm not sure if I have any renders of it. Show us if you do. <laughs> oh, you do? Okay, let's have a look. Uh, Helpwood says, don't think I ever got it past that stage. I was just curious what it would look like. Let's have a look. So this is based on a toaster, inspired by a toaster. <laughs> That's really cool too, though. I like that. So it's a toaster tank. And we have a character down here for scale. So it's huge. But I think that looks really cool. And again, I like I like the detailing you've got going on in the modeling. Oh, what's this second image here? It's a close up of it. No, I like that. I think that looks really cool. <laughs> a toaster tank. Because, like you said, why not? And it's the same when I did that parrot, I made it look really weird. So, because why not? <laughs> uh, thing. You should finish texturing this up one day. I think it would look really cool. Yeah, it's always, yeah, you know, it's a good idea to sometimes add these really kooky uh, things in in your portfolio because. Trust me, people that look at people's portfolios day in, day out tend to see the same things over and over again. Uh, and anytime you can show them something that's a little bit more interesting, it's always a good thing. You, your portfolio will be more memorable. I think that's what the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's really important, though, getting back to what we were talking about, to make sure that the cull distance value is set. Um, so I've set most of these from 0 to 20,000. So basically 20,000 units from the player's camera, the um, foliage will not will not load in. Um, now you have to be careful because it will pop in, but you can hide that by, um, by using pixel offset where it sort of fades. You know, when you play a game, you see the the distant foliage sort of fades in and out, or the rocks fade in and out, or the trees fade in and out. You can do the same thing here in the Unreal Engine with Pixel Offset. But I, to my knowledge, if you're using, if, if your game is using ray tracing, Pixel Offset is not compatible with ray tracing. Uh, and because this game is using ray tracing, we're not using Pixel Offset. Um, so the foliage does pop in, but 
If you're careful in how you design the landscape, the player will never see it pop in. Because like for instance here, we have, if I move up, we've got all this landscape back here. So basically nothing would render back here with my, uh, my culling. But because the player was, is never going to get up here and look like that, they're only ever going to be seeing the landscape from like down here. All of that is hidden anyway. So they won't notice, know that there's nothing back there. And as they move down, that 20,000 um, distance will populate up through here. So by the time they get to here, there will be grass and trees through here. But when, you know, <laughs> hang on, let me undo that. But when they're up here, say, and the trees are in the way anyway, uh, the foliage won't be drawn in. Uh, Andrew Doss says that's a huge tank. Look at the little guy down there. Andrew Doss says I think there's an option in UE4 that visually shows what portion of foliage affects performance, especially if you don't have LODs on it. I don't remember what it's called, but it shows up in your viewport. You are probably correct. There are a lot of... Um, a lot of things you can turn on here to show you different uh, different things, visualize different things in the editor. Now, we we use lotting here as, as well. So the trees are lotted and we are also using cull distance. So we're using both to improve performance. So we're not relying just on the lotting. We're, we're doing lotting and culling. Uh, again, because a this foliage is using speed tree and speed tree is very efficient, which is one of the reasons a lot of games use it. Like it, you, you can get great detail in the trees. They're all, you know, wind animated and they're really performant. Um, but if you've got the options, you should turn them on anyway. So, cause the more performance, the better. Uh, and it's, it would be particularly um, useful if you're not using say speed tree and you're modeling your own trees and, and their meshes. Uh, it, that would help performance quite a bit by turning on culling. But you do have to make, if you're going to be, if you're going to use culling and you're not going to be using pixel offset because you are using ray tracing, you're going to have to make sure that you design your landscape in such a way as the player, the player won't see things popping in and out because that's, I hate that in a game. If you're, if you're running through a landscape and you see the, the grass pop in and pop out and a tree pops in and pops out, that just does not look right. And you can get around it by making sure you in the design phase that uh, you're adding enough twists and turns so the player never gets a large vista of the landscape to see that things have been culled out. And it's not always possible depending on the type of game, but yeah. It's easier in this sort of game where we don't have huge landscapes where the player looks out over a vista. It, it may become a problem in the third landscape because we're designing part of it where you can overlook part of a lake, so that could be an issue. But we'll tackle that when up when we get to the third landscape, which we aren't at yet. Uh, Discord, thank you, Hellforge. If you want to join the Filter 3D Discord and uh, throw an image in the gallery, show us what you're working on. Click that link. Hellforge popped into Twitch chat. There's also a tutorials and tips section on the Discord, which is full of really interesting and useful uh, tutorials and videos that the users of the Discord have come across uh, over the years. And uh, there's also a section where you can um, link to your folio or demo reel. And a tools and scripts section as well, which uh, so I think only Smurf has posted in yet, but that's if you want to, if you come across any interesting tools or scripts that you think might be useful for people. You can post a link to them in there. It also has my stream schedule and all that sort of jazz on there as well. And, uh, posts and what, that I use on social media, like when I upload one of my previous streams to uh, to Twitch, I always post that in the uh, social media section on the Discord. I pay more attention to that though. I have, there are certain sections of the Discord I seem to uh, ignore a little bit and I shouldn't do that. Like the, the subscriber section, I haven't added anything new for you guys that are subs for a while, so I really have to look at doing that. Okay, so we're going to be setting the cull distance from 0 to 20,000. 20,000? Yeah. 
We can always bring it back later on if I need to. Uh, and again, I'm just going through to make sure there are no other settings here that uh, I need to change. It's just throwing me because these two are around the wrong, the, uh, are swapped around between these these two instances, like scalability on the top, physics on the bottom, and this one physics on the top, scalability on the bottom. Now, now you can drag these around, but yeah, <laughs> it was just throwing me when I was doing my comparison here as to what was going on. Okay, I think everything else is um, pretty much okay. All right, so let's have a look here. I think um, maybe through here yeah, might be cool to add some flowering plants. Wondering, maybe I made them a bit big. Either that or they're not, you know, they're not sitting on the ground, that's what it is, all right. Let's just undo that. And check our filters. We don't want it to pop, so what, what it's doing is it's populating the flowers on top of the grass. So we don't want static meshes, we don't want BSB, we just want the landscape. So let's try that again. Let me just check to make sure. No, it is actually putting that on the ground. All right. I'm just thinking it may be a bit big. I'll just say. Let's just re reduce the size a little bit, I think. So from 1.3, say to 2.5. Yeah, that's better. Is it? Or is it? I still think it might be a little bit big. Okay, so from 1.3 to, let's try 2.1. That's better. Yeah, much better. Okay, let's paint a few more through here. Maybe some in here. And we want to balance it with some over this side as well. Maybe some back in here. And maybe a few in here. Bring a few forward as well, I think, through here. And maybe through here. I'm just going to move these ones back. I'm 
Just pop one or two in here as well. And we might put a few in here. And a few back here. Okay, so I've got some there, some there. We might put a few in through here. Maybe some in through here. Some over here. I'm getting sort of lost here, okay. I'll put a bunch through here. Some through here. I'm sort of framing the steps as the player moves up. So it's sort of the look I'm going for here. Move this one over because I think it's a little bit too far forward. Let's put a bunch through here and some up through here. Okay, let's just turn lit mode back on so I can get a better look. And I'm just going to go out of um, landscape mode so I don't accidentally paint more in than I want. Bear in mind these will change colour slightly once we do a rebuild on the lighting. So. We're sort of covering up our tree trunk back here and I, I quite like the look of that. We, like we can see that tree in the background and it's being hidden by the monsterias now, or the chanels. Um, so I might move them over, I think. While, it, while I like the overhang of the door here, I, I like the tree in the background more. So I'm going to, I think, move these over. We'll see what that looks like. Go back into lit mode. Which one did I miss? This one. So yeah, I, I like being able to see the tree here in the background a little bit better than having the chanels overhang the um the doorway. It's just, it's a more interesting silhouette. That's basically why, why I prefer this. Seeing the tree trunk in the background here is a more interesting silhouette than seeing the Chanel's overhang the doorway. I 
I'm just, just trying to decide if I want to bring in any more candles. Oh, I'm just worried it's like through here is a little dark. We do want it a little dark. We want it to be a little bit creepy. Pretty creepy. You know, you know what I mean. Uh, hang on, what are we guys saying? Android is a... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Android Lost says, since you're, you're using both, I don't think there's much of a problem. Hellforge says, how are you doing today? I'm doing really good, Hellforge. Thanks for asking. <laughs> how are you guys doing? You guys been up to anything interesting? Actually, I think next week we've got one of our um, Just Chat streams, so I should save that up and ask then what you guys have been watching on TV or if you've seen the interesting movies, but don't tell me now. We'll talk about it next week. Because uh, I think... Uh, what, what? Let me have a look. I can't remember, actually. Oh, if I go to Twitch, I don't, I don't want to see myself on stream. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty sure one, one of the streams next... Because I don't like looking at myself on stream. One of the streams next week is uh, a Just Chat stream. I think it's either... I think it's Tuesday next week. I think. It's, it's always the last stream of the month, whether that's a Monday or a Tuesday. So it's either Monday or Tuesday next week. Sniper Girl says, directly under trees, wouldn't there be uh, less tall grass, especially under trees with large leaves? Wow. Yeah, there would be. There probably wouldn't be any grass under, under generally under really tall trees like this. You have an area around them that there's no grass at all. But this is a hollow, so, you know. We can take a bit of artistic license, I think, here. We're making like a, a semi-magical space, so... Who's to say that grass can't grow under trees in the hollow? But you are correct. Uh, Snobby Girl says, I watched... For, yeah, but let's not talk about that next week. We'll talk about what we've watched next week. <laughs> Snubby Girl says, the new Ryan Reynolds movie. Yeah, I, I'm not, I haven't watched it myself. But, mm. I like Ryan Reynolds as an actor. Alford says, I'm all right overall, although my arms are really sore. I got my first back shot today, so that's the thing that happened. Oh, well done. Well done on getting backs. Tell us, which backs did you get? I'm always interested to see which uh, different backs people have access to and what they end up getting. But well done on getting backs. That's a good thing. Uh, and yeah, a, a couple of people, because you know, you guys have been talking, have spoken about it when you've got vaxxed in my stream, and I know a few people have felt a bit, bit, bit sore or a bit, yeah, the, after the first day, but it goes away quickly. Uh, Smurf says, oh, hey, tool bag four is 20% off for the next five days. Well, there you go. You want to buy Mama Set? You can get 20% off for the next five days. Uh, Hellforge says Pfizer, or however you spell it. Yep, Pfizer. You spelled it right, I think. Yes, the Pfizer vaccine that's just been approved for the F by the FDA or whatever it is in the United States. So it's got a full approval now. The very first uh, vac, vax that's been fully approved by the American drug people. You know, whatever they call the... <laughs> we call it something else over here. No, Gizan says I got Pfizer too. Well done, Gizan. No issues. Yeah. If you do get, if you do feel a little sore or a little under the weather after the shot, it's only a day or two at the most, and then you, you'll come good. It's just your body getting used to having the, you know, having the vaccine. Having said that, though, don't, you know, make sure you consult your doctor before you get any vaccine if you're really we're really worried about it. But yeah, generally you're fine. Fine after a couple of days. Hellwood says, tool bag hype, yeah. Snappy Girl says, I want to get the uh, J&J Vax. Mostly due to you only need a one shot. Yeah, I thought they, wasn't there some controversy about the J&J one? Or maybe I'm, I haven't heard a lot about the J&J one. That's only available in the US, I think. Sniper Girl says to Smooth, oh my God, nice. Tool bag is awesome. So there you go, guys. If you do want to buy a tool bag or there's a 20% off for the next five days 
So if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, that probably will be over because YouTube is behind Twitch. But if you're watching me live and you do want to buy a tool bag, now's the time to buy it for 20% off. I have no association with tool bag. I get no kickbacks from you buying it. So, you know, you buy it if you want. If you don't want, don't buy it. <laughs> Makes no difference to me. <laughs> it is a good program though. So it is good. it's good to have in your, in your arsenal of stuff if you do 3D work. Andrew Dot says, I had uh, Pfizer, had a sore arm and a headache on the second day. No biggie. Yeah. Um, we have two main vac vaccines in this country. One is Pfizer and the other one is uh, Ast AstraZeneca. They're the two that they're distributing in Australia. And we're getting Moderna, I think, in the next month or so. There'll be Moderna, Moderna as well. Hellford says to Smurf, thanks for letting me know about that. Snappy Girl says uh, there was like 0.2% of people that had it, all women, had a, had a special type of blood clot. Yeah, that the AstraZeneca one, that was a problem too. Uh, the type of clot it caused was extremely deadly due to the measures to uh, handle the clots traditionally could make things worse. There have been a couple of deaths. Look, I don't, yeah, we, I don't like talking about it because it's a very, very, very small percentage of people that, might, that may have a problem. But um, the AstraZeneca vaccine, we have had a, a few, a few, like maybe, you know, a couple of dozen deaths from the AstraZeneca vaccine because of blood clotting. But it's incredibly rare. Uh, Andrew Lott says, is it the subscription that's only 20% off? Alford says the bake tools alone that tool bag has are worth it to be honest and it has great for, it's great for portfolio arrangements too. It is let's check it out. I want to well, I don't use tool bag. I tend to do my renders in 3D Studio Max, I use V-Ray. But having said that, I have used tool bag in the past. It is a really good um, piece of software. I do recommend you guys check it out at least and yeah, it, it, it's worth worth buying. Mom set. Marmoset Tool Bag 4. Let's see. Where's where's the discount? So you can you can you get it on subscription or you can buy a perpetual license for individual studio or academic. Wow. I didn't realise it had gotten that expensive for studio, but anyway. non-commercial hmm. that is that is, that is quite expensive now actually so if you wanted to use it commercially you're gonna to have to buy a studio license and that's like 800 bucks wow they do have an academic version as well yearly subscription which is which is decent uh, if you're an individual though that's not too bad I guess maybe it's on the oh, here we go 20 percent of all all individual licenses the first 12 months of new subscriptions that looks like the 20% offers on the subscription part not on the perpetual help says the bake tools alone that tool bag has are worth it to be honest and it's great for portfolio renders Yuzan says thanks for getting me tool bag for sniper girl Navigil says, with the J&J clots, uh, I think there was 12 to 20 cases out of 9 million vaccines. Yeah, it's a very, very, very small percentage uh, of people that could have a problem. Uh, Andrew Loss says, individual has commercial and non... Oh, has commercial and non-commercial, does it? Product license for commercial and non-commercial use. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's okay then. So, what's the studio license oh, get you that uh, the other that the other one doesn't? So, if the individual, you can use it for commercial purposes. Yeah, that that's decent then. That's pretty good for, for perpetual license. Or, of course, you can subscribe monthly. But we hate subscription models because they're evil. 
companies that do sub only like adobe are evil uh but that that's pretty decent but it looks like the um the 20 percent off is uh, is for the subscription model for the first 12 months which uh, that's pretty good actually so you can take 20 percent off of that and for 12 months Uh, thanks for pointing that out for the individual non commercial and uh, personal commercial and non commercial. I didn't didn't read that properly. How uh, Andrew does? Um, Sniper girl says Yuzan, yeah, not going to happen. All of my money that I'm saving up right now is going into the drone. Yeah, uh, you you asked a question on the Discord Sniper girl. I see about um, buying refurbished. It's certified refurbished, so that's and it's done by the manufacturer. So if you're going to buy refurbished. That's the best way to buy refurbished. But as Smurf said, uh, I don't trust refur refurbished either. Uh, I always try not to buy a refurb. Yeah, because generally I think of refurbs as um, people have bought it, it's had a problem, they've returned it to the supplier and either got a refund or a replacement and then the supplier has found is fixed whatever the problem was. So if, it's, if, if it broke once, Chances are it might break again, so I don't want to buy it. So I, I don't tend to buy refurb. But you can get them a lot cheaper refurb. So it, you know, if you want to take the risk, then you can save a lot of money. Uh, Smurf says it's for both. Oh, it's for both, is it? Oh, okay. Really? So you got four days, three. Let me have a look. If I go to buy it. I, I already own it, so I don't need to buy it again, but... And um, we're going to go for the perpetual, not with an upgrade. So they're going to add the, up. Oh, there we go, the coupon, yep, the 20% off, so two thirty nine twenty. So there you go, if you want to buy a perpetual license on the very latest version of Toolbag, is completely correct, you do get the 20% discount as well. Anyway, that's that's enough promotion of uh, Marmoset for, <laughs> for them. Um, so that says, yeah, save up to $59 on individual perpetual licenses, save up to $3 a month uh, or $32 a year. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm losing my voice. <coughs> on individual subscription discount applies for the first 12 months only. Android Lust says, uh, so the original price is not $2.99. No, it's $2.39, which is decent. Mappy Girl says, I think I'll go uh, the refurb route, <clears throat> only because it's a manufacturer and they guarantee it. That says in the description that everything is mechanically new with uh, minor scuffs. <clears throat> I can deal with scuff marks. Well, that's fine, yeah. If you're going to be saving a decent amount of money, then <clears throat> by all means, buy refurb. I, I, I try not to, though. I, yeah. Particularly when it comes to technology. <laughs> I always try and make sure it's new. That's just me, though. Uh, Andrew Lost says, nice. Sniper Girl says, uh, looking at taking the covers off and painting them anyway. I mean, the only thing I don't like is the uh, Evo Pro 2 is the pumpkin orange it comes in. Oh, I like orange. Orange is one of my favourite colours. Orange and purple. Not together, obviously. Um, two colours I love. Not, 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 not enough situations where you can use orange or wear orange, but yeah, I do like orange as a colour. Um, so I'm just thinking whether I'll place another candle over here. I don't know. I mean, I do want it to be a bit creepy. There is a skeleton in the outhouse after all, so we don't want it too brightly lit around here. We want to make it a little bit creepy. I think what I'll, what I'll do is, because the lighting will change slightly once we do a, a rebuild anyway on the lighting, I'll wait till a rebuild is done and then uh, if I feel it's still too dark just through here, I will um, add some candles, but yeah, not sure. Um, 
Smurf says, hello Kitty Island Adventure Paint Scheme, go. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, uh, I've had good luck with used. My camera was bought used and uh, as with my as with my tablet, both are great and work wonderfully. Well, there you go. I guess it depends on the company you're buying from really too. Uh, Jazan says, orange is my favorite color. Well, I'm with you. Orange and purple are my favorite colors. I can't, I can't choose between one or the other. I like them both equally. Uh, Andrew Zoss says, paint it, paint it highlighter yellow. I think he's talking to Snappy Girl about her drone. Snappy Girl says, uh, so it can be seen from space, no thanks. Uh, Hellboy says, uh, I had a look at some apartments in Brooklyn and New York City. The prices are pants on head insane for the monthly rent. It costs more in rent alone for one of the cheaper ones than all of my monthly expenses put together. New York has always been expensive though. My American friends here will tell you how expensive New York has always been. You've got to get one of those rent controlled buildings, which are, you know, near impossible to come across in New York these days. Uh, Andrew Lust says to help forge New York City has some of the most expensive apartments in the United States. Sniper Girl says to help forge not surprised, New York is expensive. Andrew Lust says at least on the east coast of the US. He's talking about the most expensive apartments. Uh, Andrew uh, Sniper Girl says I think a drone that is purple could be nice. I think a purple drone would be lovely. Andrew Lust says and they are small. I'm talking about the apartment sizes, yeah. Well, you know, everyone wants to live in New York, don't they? And if you want to live in New York, then you've got to pay. I have to admit, I mean, I've not been to the United States, so I haven't been to New York, but uh, from what I've seen in films and things that I've watched or documentaries, it does look like a, like a fun city to live in. Like there's always people around. Uh, Central Park looks amazing. Um, yeah, I think it would be a fun place to live. I tend... Uh, I live in the inner city as it is, but um, I tend to like open space a bit more. So even though you could go to Central Park and it is a lovely, beautiful, large park, uh, just the sort of living amongst all those skyscrapers, I don't know. I don't know if I'd enjoy that, actually living in an apartment in the skyscrapers. Andrew Lust says, Matt Purple. Matt Purple on the drone would be cool. Jazan says, yeah, I never said anything, but I moved to North Carolina recently. Oh, cool. North Carolina is beautiful. Um, I, I believe, isn't that where Epic is headquartered in North Carolina? Epic Games. Uh, in North Carolina, from what I've seen, is just beautiful. Like, scenery-wise, it's just beautiful. So I'm jealous, uh, Jazan. North Carolina is lovely. So, yeah, a health board says, yeah, I, I saw an apartment for $2,200 a month for a place that's less than half the size of the three rooms I live in now. $2,200 a month. And remember, that's American. So, wow. Now, Snappy Girl says, I'm tempted to go pink. Well, pink would be cool, good, nice too. But I think it could be too bright. I could see there being pink. Oh, pink tint on my pictures from light reflecting on the lenses. That's actually I had something I hadn't even thought about. That's a really good point, Sniper Girl. Yeah, I think, yeah, you want to try and avoid that. Yeah, something I did not even consider because generally all, all the drones we use are white. Or like, yeah, off white. Um, Sniper Girl says it depends. They have uh, studios all over currently. Oh, you're talking about Epic Games? Yeah, I know. But didn't they start, isn't there, aren't they headquartered? Didn't they start in North Carolina? Or maybe I'm, I'm, mis, I'm wrong. I do know, I know that they have a studio in North Carolina. Uh, it says save and copy. Yes, let's do that. Let's do a save and I'll have a copy. Because we haven't done one for a while. More copy. One sip's not enough. Snappy Girl says, yeah, they originally started in North Carolina. I think I'll go a matte dark purple on the drone when I get it. Well, that sounds, that sounds cool. Mm. 
But yeah, you are, I, I hadn't even thought about that sniper girl. It was good thinking that if you go for like a bright pink, you you may get um, reflection happening in the, in the photos or from the or a tint happening on the lens from uh, and then affecting the photos. So yes, I'm jealous. So North Carolina, beautiful from what I've seen. Beautiful. So yeah, I, I, I like the, the open spaces more than that's that's why I think I, I don't think I could ever really live in New York City because uh, the thought of, of apartment living in a skyscraper doesn't really appeal to me. Having that many people around me constantly, I, I, I like a bit more space. <laughs> you know, like I said, having said that, I live in the inner city of Melbourne. I don't live in an open space anyway, but and I'm in a flat that's got you know other people beside me. I, I have no one above me or below me. But I have people in flats either side of me, so on my left and my right. And believe me, you hear them constantly. Like the guy that lives next door to me here on my my left hand side snores. And I can hear it in my bedroom when I go to bed at night. He's so loud. Um, but I, I just, I listen to like sleep music like thunderstorm and rain. So that sort of drowns him out, thank God. I'm really big on sleep sounds to help me sleep because it's so noisy. <laughs> uh, he's a new neighbor too, by the way. The guy that used to live there moved out about six months ago, and th these people are new. And yeah, the snoring, the, the, the snoring from this guy. Wow. So I think we share a common wall on um, on the left, and I share a common wall on the right with the other apartments. And because the apartments are sort of like built as mirror images to to each other, his master bedroom is like a mirror image of my master bedroom. So he must his bed would be like here against the wall, and my bed is here against the wall. So yeah, I hear him really loud. Andrew Lust says to help forge, but in New York City, you techn technically don't need a car to go places. Uh, Sniper Girl says I have to register it with the FAA and have the number of on the drone. Do you think a D car would work for that? I can't see why not. Why wouldn't it? I think a D car would work. Sniper Girl says to Andrew Lust, is that true? Cities like Chicago and New York, you don't need a car. I don't have a car in Melbourne, and I get get by quite fine. So, and Melbourne is nowhere near as big as New York <laughs> or Chicago. Uh, Andrew Lust says, and a car can be a hassle there. Snobby Girl says, uh, all the darn expensive rates for parking. Elfwood says, same thing over here in Stockholm right now. Uh, I don't need a car to get around if the public transport is good enough. Yeah, I use public transport all the time. We have really good public transport in Australia, particularly in Melbourne where I live. Really good train network. We have buses. We have trams. I love trams, so I don't mind using public transport when I need to get around because it gets me virtually anywhere I need to go. And if it, if it doesn't, then I either get a, a taxi or an Uber. So I don't miss not having a car. Having said that, I can drive, and I you know I have driven in the past, so I just not for a very long time now, simply because I choose not to. Bad for the environment, cars bad. Uh, Android Lust says snoring. Helpwood says just stu stupidly expensive. Android Lust says, uh, yeah, you could probably have to, yeah, you'd probably have to park a block away from your apartment. Also, people will probably hit your car. Sniper Girl says, have you considered uh, having, putting up a rug? Oh, that's a good idea. And uh, hanging it on the wall for sound dampening or. Maybe a wall curtain. Yeah, that's a, I hadn't actually considered that. You're full of good ideas, Snappy Girl. Yeah, no, I hadn't considered that. That is a good idea, hanging a rug, because that would dampen it. Like I said, I, I play sleep sounds anyway, uh, so I don't. Once once the thunderstorm kicks off and the rain in, in, through the speaker, I don't tend to hear him anyway. But that is a good idea. Snappy Girl says I use public transport in Shem. Pain, champion. I'm a vet. 
and you can ride the public transport for free. Well, that's pretty good. Where she where she lives? Okay, public transport is not free here. Uh, Android Lust says, but cars are cool. Yes, we. I know you guys love your cars. Navi Girl says, uh, I'm waiting for an affordable electrical vehicle. I'm waiting for a self-driving car and then I'll probably buy one again. No, maybe, yeah. You know, one where I don't have to do any work. I can just sit in, program in, in the GPS where I want it to go and it just drives itself. Could be a ways away for that, I think, even though they have made great strides, Tesla and stuff in self-driving cars, I think, um, yeah. <laughs> because of people dying, it may be a little while off yet. Uh, Andrew Lust says to some people, yeah, I want a full electric one. Thank you. There's the Discord link. If you want to become a Fildo and join the Fildo's 3D Discord, click that link, Help which has helpfully popped into Twitch chat, guys. If you're new to my stream. And if you do want to wishlist the game you see me working on here, uh, click the link, Help which popped into Twitch chat as well. So, yeah, again, uh, a lot of this will change. The lighting will change a little bit once I do a rebuild on the um, level. So I think what I'll do with the um, with the darker area here is I won't put candles in until we rebuild the lighting. And then we'll take another look at it then to see if it needs anything else. Now there's just one other thing I need to add through here and I want to put some leaves along the path. So I'm going to go back into uh, unlit mode. And we're going to find a pile of leaves. And we're going to duplicate them. Now again, I, 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 I have leaves in the foliage tool so I could paint them in. Um, there are benefits to painting them in, like the engine automatically instances anything that's part of the foliage tool. Um, but I, I'm going to instance these by hand. Anyway, and I just find that with leaves I get a bit more control over doing it by hand than trying to use the foliage tool. Paint them in. Um, you see that this path is actually raised above the ground level, so I can't have the leaves overhanging the edge of the path. They must be basically on the path. I, I can on this side, I think. <laughs> you see what I mean by I'm wanting to move the camera and end up moving the object. Uh, and I have to bear in mind too, this path is actually angled a little bit, so it's not straight. So again, just for a bit more realism, we, we don't have the path sitting completely flat, perpendicular. It's uh, angled a little, so it looks like it's sunk over the years. So we'll have a pile of leaves there, and we'll put another pile maybe here. And Just move that down a little bit. Let's duplicate it again. And put one over here. Because, you know, this tree is losing its leaves anyway, so we, it's fitting that we have leaves along the path. So. And let's put another pile down here. I see, I see the check going there. What's going on? Uh, Snappy Girl says, prefer. Preferably with solid state batteries means lithium ion batteries can explode if punctured or if you're in an accident. Yeah, those lithium ions, which are in all of our phones, can explode. <laughs> Actually, had to replace one of my old phones. I, I, I used, I upgrade my phone, you know, every, every few years, say. My old, uh, my old Android phone I used 
beside my bed as a clock and yeah like, like a clock basically i have like a stand it's a wireless stand charger stand so i set my phone in there and use that as a clock a digital clock um but i, I actually had to retire my old uh, nexus i think it was my old nexus phone because the battery was starting to expand so the case was being split apart <laughs> And that's always, you really should not be recharging batteries if they're starting to expand in your phone. Because basically what's happening is the gas gas is forming inside the battery because the batteries are sealed. These lithium ion batteries are sealed. Um, and gas is starting to build up inside of the seal so that the risk is that they could explode. So I, I, re I retired the Nexus and I bought a, uh, a Pixel, an Android Pixel phone and I've replaced it with that as my clock radio. It gave me a good six years though, that old Nexus phone, so. Um, Android Lust says, I don't entirely want a self-driving one though. I do. <laughs> Android Lust says hybrids, especially older ones kind of suck in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, Sniper Girl says, I've mixed feelings on self-driving cars. Some of them are so much safer than manually driving. Where I have concerns is privacy. What information are they recording? Yeah, I don't know. There was uh, that, that bad accident with te with a Tesla, though. I think it was, where it didn't kill somebody in the US when they were doing their testing on some highway. Ran somebody over. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, and I'm, until, it, in, until they work out all the bugs, I, I'm a bit apprehensive about letting a car drive me. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, putting my life in the hands of, an, of, of, of a program, basically. I'm not sure how, how I feel about that at this stage. But I can see the appeal of it. And I would, you know, once they worked out all the bugs and made sure it was completely safe, I could see the benefit of having a self-driving car. Android Lust says, uh, I imagine it's always recording, talking about the privacy issues Sniper Girl mentioned. Sniper Girl says, yeah, which scares me. Uh, Sniper Girl says, I mean, it's bad enough that my phone is always tracking me and the information is being sold. The last thing I want is an additional additional device doing that. Yep. They're tracking you with your phone everywhere you go. You, me, and everyone else on the planet. Um, Sniper Girl says if my info is being sold based on a product that I buy, I'd like a cut of it at the very least or a way to legally opt out. I agree. I think that them selling your data and my data and everyone's data is terrible. And it should be made illegal. They should make it so if, if these companies want to harvest your data, they either need your express permission to do it or they need to give you a cut of whatever money they're making from your data. If they're not prepared to do that, then they should be legal. Legally, they should be stopped from doing it. Google, Apple, Facebook, Twitter. I'm looking at all of you. You're all equally, you know, guilty here of using our data for free. And it's big business and big money. Don't think your data's not worth a lot. It's worth a lot in this information technology era we live in, that data of yours is, is is worth a lot to these companies and to advertisers that buy it. Trust me. So the sooner politicians make laws to make it, you know, to force these companies to actually give you a cut of your data, whatever they use your, sell your data for, or stop them from using your data, period. We should all kick up a stink about it. Uh, Andrew Doss says, it's a little annoying that my phone asks, how was your experience at X? I don't need my car doing that. Uh, Andrew Doss says, your battery was starting to blow up. Yes, it was. And, and it's dangerous. You don't want to, you don't want to be, <laughs> you don't want a, a battery sitting beside, you know, two feet away from your head that, that could explode. Because that's where my clock radio sits on my bedside table, right beside my pillow. Uh, so when, 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 the, when the phone started to split apart, uh, I thought it, uh, maybe it's time to, to not use this uh, phone anymore, even as a clock radio. 
And Indra Duff says, um, Javi Cuss says, yep. Hellboy says, Phil, was that the car model you made? What? The inspiration for it? Which? What? Where? How? <laughs> what are you talking about, Hellboy? What car model? Not the Tesla. No, Tesla was not my, my inspiration <laughs> for the car. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Luss says, I didn't hear about the Tesla incident. Also not sure on how many Tesla related accidents happen per year, but it might be less than sports car accidents. So yeah, this was this was a test that they were doing. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Tesla where the car was fully automated. So th there was a driver, I think, because legally they have to have a driver there in case something goes wrong. So there was a driver in the car while the car was being automatically driving itself. And I think what happened was that the, the 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 actual person didn't react quickly enough to stop the car from hitting this person that was crossing a freeway, I believe, in the US, and I think they killed them. Um, and then there was a big controversy, and Tesla stopped testing for a while. And yeah, so there are still bugs to, for them to work out. It, it was at night too, so that was the other thing. It wasn't like the car was driving during the daytime. It was like like twilight or night time so obviously the, the car didn't have as clear a sight as it could have during the day um, but any, anyway you can't have self-driving cars that kill people that run people over that's just <laughs> you cannot release a product like that but they're not the only company doing self-driving cars a lot of the all of them i think are now trying to look at doing self-driving cars so fully automatic self-driving cars Hang on, read it again, Hellford says. Phil, what oh what was what was the car model you made? The inspiration, sorry. <laughs> oh dear. Yes, you are correct, it was the Bugatti. So it's inspired, inspired by a Bugatti. 1924 Bugatti. Or Bugatti, however you want to pronounce it. Bugatti Bugatti. Uh, Helpwood says the car model you made for the game uh, that you showed at the start of the stream. Sniper Girl says this is according to an article by Forbes. Uh, why is Tesla full? Why? Why is Tesla's full self-driving only level two autonomous? I'll check that out after the stream. That article, Sniper Girl. But I, I'm pretty sure it was the Tesla that ran someone over and killed him. <laughs> Android Lust says, he says, thank you, Android Lust Hellhood. Android Lust says, so it's a user error as normal. Uh, Android Lust, though it's self-driving, you're not supposed to completely be attentionless while driving. So, no, that's true. You're not. You're meant to be, have a driver there that can take control. Don't rely completely on the self-driving program. AI, as they want to call it. It's not an AI, it's just a program. That's all these AI, any, it, it amuses me actually when I hear companies talk about AI because that's the new buzzword these days. Everything is AI, like AI gigapixel and AI video and, you know, the upscaling stuff. DLSS, deep learning super sampling, and they talk about that as being an AI. Um, none of these things are really AIs. They're just programs, basically. I mean, they, they can be self-learning programs, but they're still programs. So there's nothing really that special about them. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're incredible programs and the people that created them are incredibly smart, intelligent people, but they're still just programs. It's just code running. Because when I hear the word AI, I think of things like, um, you know, the, the, the movies you all see where the, where the thing is thinking for itself, where this computer program is like a big brain and thinking for itself, they're not like that at all. And they won't be for a very long time. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are AIs, as they call them, that can think in, but they're specialist systems like medical and, yeah. <laughs> so don't, don't put a lot of trust in these so-called AIs because they're pretty dumb if they are AI. A lot of them, compared to a human brain anyway. Um, Sniper Girl says Teslas are only two a level two autonomous vehicles. For a car to be self-driving without the user being involved, it needs to be level five. 
You guys know that uh, the Yachtsby Studio, we do a lot of work for the uh, mining industry. And they are completely self-driving. We have these huge, huge mining trucks that drive around the mining sites. They're all autonomous. There is not a driver involved. Uh, the same with trains. They have trains that run across the country, mining trains. So that they don't use the um, public rail network. They, the mining companies built their own rail network and they run trains that are completely autonomous, that are full of all the different minerals that they're mining. So yeah, it's, it's quite freaky actually when you walk around one of the mining sites, one of the big open cut mining sites, and you see these massive trucks, like a one wheel of one of these trucks is like taller than a, per a six foot tall person. So these trucks are massive and there's no one behind the wheel. It's all, it's all autonomous, it's, it's creepy. Um, Android Lust says, I think it also requires you input something every few minutes or so while in driving, self-driving mode so the user doesn't fall asleep. Uh, Snappy Girl says to Android Lust, it depends on the level of automation. Level 5, you're allowed to not focus on what the car is doing. You tend to operate with LiDAR uh, that is 360 degrees uh, that work well in all lighting conditions and also AI based that is always updating. Android Dust says level 5 would seem impressive though. Uh, Snappy Girl says they are. Seen some impressive documentaries on a couple, uh, on a company that makes level 5 autonomous vehicles. Yeah, look, like I said, they've been using them in the mining industry in this country for a very long time. Um, and they seem to work well for them, for the mining companies anyway. But, the, but remember, these mining companies uh, that are using these completely autonomous vehicles, there's no, there, there's no, um, there are no pedestrians, there are no people around, so there is no risk to uh, to be to someone being injured or hurt. You know, if something goes wrong, the worst that's going to happen is the, the truck will be destroyed or it'll hit another truck that's got no one in it anyway. Uh, but they, they tend to operate very well because they don't have those uh, variables that a normal self-driving car that would be in the general population would have like people running out in front of the car or the car in front of them stopping suddenly or, you know, these unexpected things that could happen that they've got to take take into account uh, with anything that um, might be self-driving in the community. The mining companies don't have to worry about that. And they don't have to pay drivers, so they love it. They don't have to pay anyone. All these self-driving cars just, you know, operate themselves. Or self-driving trucks, I should say, not cars. Uh, Helpwood says, I'm not sure, but I think the car film made uses a straight engine rather than a V. Oh, okay. Oh, look, I don't know. <laughs> there is no engine under the un in the bonnet under the bonnet of this car in in my modelling. <laughs> Helpwood says, I'm having a hard time finding any info about it. Yeah, it's a Bugatti 90, a 1924 Bugatti. Let's move one more. Let's put some leaves down here by the actual um, outhouse itself. Put a pile around that. I don't know what you call that spittoon thing, but anyway. Uh, so we'll put some there and we might put some, we might put some over here, because why not? Maybe a pile Yeah, It doesn't matter if uh, they're hidden under the path, that's fine. As long as they don't come through the path, then we should be good. And do I want any leaves anywhere else? <laughs> what the? There's something missing. What the? What the? What the? What the? What the? There should be a. Uh, did I move it? We we placed the outhouse on top of a um 
uh, uh, stone base. Why is the stone base not there? What's that all about? That is weird. There should be a stone base because I'm thinking why is why is the outhouse floating? But it's, it's not floating. There was a stone base. Let me just move these leaves out of the way for a minute while I work out where that stone base. I'm just wondering if I've moved it by mistake. You know how I move the camera and it moves stuff. But it doesn't appear to be. Um, let me go to the outhouse. Yeah, we have this outhouse stone base mesh. I'm going to see if it's actually going to show up. Yes, outhouse stone base mesh. You see, it is here. It's just not showing up. Now that's very strange. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the scene and then I'm going to reload the um, reload the level. So we're going to do a save all because I've noticed sometimes these visual glitches can happen with the editor, particularly after you start adding stuff before you do a rebuild on the lighting. Uh, so we've made sure we've saved all. I'm going to close down Unreal and reopen it. It says Bugatti Type 35A by the looks of it. Uh, oh, Helpwood says I'm not good with vintage cars. Andrew Lott says don't know if I could take a V8 because of the piston positioning. Helpwood says how does the outhouse work on a stone base? Either you dig a in a you dig a hole in the ground or you have a barrel under it. You have a barrel. Oh, map check generated warnings. Well, a stone base is back, so that's good. Uh, I'm just going to um, see what's going on here. I'm just going to try and remember where they put the actual thing I'm looking for. Where did they put the map check in this? Do you guys remember? I can't remember. I thought it was here somewhere. Snappy Girl says, oh my god, the new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer is out and it's amazing. I'll have to check that out too. Andrew Lost says, so did people have to clear out the barrel? <laughs> Hang on, let, let, let me try and find um, what I'm looking for here. I want to know what it's having an issue with, and I can't remember where they put the thing. I'm looking for the map uh, for the map check dialog box. Oh, she's post, uh, Snappy Girl's posted in the Discord server the trailer for Spider-Man Homecoming. You guys want to check that out on the Discord while you see me looking through here to try and find what I'm after. <laughs> oh, maybe it's, um, yeah. Map check, yeah. Uh, the only error it's saying is uh, it need, the lighting needs to be rebuilt. Notice it says two errors. Hang on. World settings, map needs lighting rebuilt. Map check complete, one error, zero warnings. Why does it say two errors? 
Well, it's just talking about the lighting, and I know that the lighting needs to be rebuilt, so I'm wondering why it's warning me about that again. Uh, but anyway, the, the problem we had here with our base is, is fixed. Our base is back there again, which is good. Uh, let's just fix up our leaves again, now that the base is back. So we'll put a pile around that thing on the ground. We've got a pile over there. Basically leaves should sort of like, they'll, they'll gather anywhere that there are objects where the wind blows them into. And that's why they, they tend to gather along paths. So maybe we'll put one more bunch of leaves. Okay. I may have to make sure I'm in the right level here. Maybe we'll put one more bunch of leaves sort of over here. Okay, let's go back into lit mode. We've got the leaves around there. We've got the leaves along our path. You guys posting in the Discord. <laughs> she says, yep, totally didn't watch the trailer while watching Phil's stream. <laughs> You'd rather watch Spider-Man than me. Ah. Let's do a save all. I just want to check this again by uh, closing the uh, editor down and reopening it. And then I'm going to check out the images you guys posted in the Discord server. So yeah, again, I'm making sure it's saved. Good. I'm going to close the editor down. Reopen it again. Reload the level. Reload the actual level in the level. Napoid stem branch material. It's that new snapweed we added. Was missing the usage file. Be used with instant static meshes. If the material asset is not resaved, it may not render correctly with the uh, when run outside the editor. Okay. Branch match. Missing the usage flag. Used with instant static meshes. Okay, basically it's complaining about the materials for the napweed. Okay, so it's here. Just wondering why that is. Because that was a material that was created from Speed Tree directly. Not something like the material was auto created when I imported the mesh. I'm wondering why that wasn't automatically checked. I'm just going to check one of the other materials from Speed Tree to see how it's handling that. Uh, so the elderberry flowers, let's have a look at that. Yeah, use with static light. You see, see, this one is not checked. Used with instant static meshes. And it's got something to do with the fact that um, the engine is using that instance type. Oh, wow, why is it doing that? 
So use with static lighting. This one you see use with static lighting. There's, there's something strange going on here. <sighs> why you do this? Unreal, why? Materials themselves are identical. Pretty much. Yet, the flags for the material Yeah, what, what's, what's confusing me here is this is a material from a speed tree that we are using uh, inside of the um, the landscape and it does not have use with instant static meshes uh, enabled but it does have use with static lighting now this one which is the new one we just added has use with instant static meshes enabled and has used with static lighting disabled So I'm a little bit confused as to why it's doing this. And uh, the warning we're getting is that the material had that disabled. Was missing the usage flag for be used within instant static meshes. If the material asset is not resaved, it may not render correctly. Um, so we'll do what it wants us to do. So. No. So we're going to apply, save the material. I'm going to do that for these other two as well. Use with instant static meshes, save the material. And this one. Use with instance static meshes, save the material, and now I'm going to save all and reload it one last time and see if we get that uh, message error message again. Uh, what are you guys talking about? Get on my maps. Andrew Doss says, I haven't seen Spider-Man Homecoming yet. I'm going to spend a weekend watching all of the MCU films I missed, which is nearly all of them. Okay, now we're not getting the error message, which is good. But it's still, I'm still a little confused about that. Um, and the reason it's different is because if we go into the landscape again to the foliage tool. Hang on. I think it's because I'm in the wrong level. Let's go into the landscape. <gasps> I'm thinking, what's going on here? Um, we have our original indoor plant and then the engine created a version called foliage type, which has zero because we're using the actual plant. But when we imported that new napweed, it created a foliage type which we are using but didn't bring in the original file so there's a difference there and i'm just not sure why uh, it's using okay it, it's referencing the original here as the mesh the napweed but it resaved it out as a foliage type and i'm just not sure why it did that like it did that with all of these, but we don't use the foliage type. We're using the original, except for the new one we just added. Now, this is a change that Epic have obviously made between when we originally created the landscape and added the foliage. And this, these new versions of the engine, where if you add new foliage, it's saving it as a foliage type. Um, which requires us, obviously, to have... 
uh, that flag turned on in the material, which we didn't need when it wasn't a foliage type. Aside from that, everything is identical. So I'm not really, I may have to look that up, find out what's going on there, I think. Because it's confusing me. Foliage Instant Static Mesh Component. Foliage Instant Static Mesh Component. They're both identical, but one is a foliage type and one is not. So yeah, I'm confused. Now, whether it's just the naming that's different, whether, you know, yeah, it could just be the naming that's different. But the shader seems to be different as well. The engine complains with the shader. So I am a little bit, a little bit confused by that. I mean, it's making sure the thing is moving in the wind as well. I mean, they, they're moving in the wind, so that's fine. Should be identical. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's weird. I'm, I'm going to have to keep an eye, uh, look into that, I think. Um, let's do a save all though. Let's get out of uh, landscape mode. Do a save all now. We're not getting those error messages. And let's look at the work you guys posted in the Discord. So we're going to start with 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 wax kinks uh cursed hand mirror sword so this is something wax kink may oh nice so it's a cursed hand mirror sword wow nice work uh wax kink yeah, it's got that painted look to the texturing, which is really cool. I love it. Yep, yeah, really nice work, Wax King. He animated it, go to his art station. Oh, okay. Let me have a look. So this is Wax King's art station. Oh, here we go. Nice. Oh, that is cool. I like, uh, I like these little bits and pieces he's got floating around the actual bottom of the blade looks really cool very nice work oh that is cool Look, yeah that's very cool yeah it's incredibly cool Yeah, I love it. Love it. Nice work, Lex. I think it is. Very, very nice work. I love the animation you put on it. Looks really cool. I love the way the blade breaks apart. Yeah, looks really good. Um, thank you for letting me show it on the stream, Wax Kink. I know you're not in chat, but um, thank you anyway. And now Android Lust has also worked, uh, also, uh, I'll put an image in the gallery of a cyber, a very cyberpunkish looking to me, a uh, lady. Just make sure I'm zoomed in correctly. Uh, again, beautiful work, Android Lusset. He says uh, it's a bit different than what he normally does, but beautifully done. I like the rendering as well. Uh, like I like the. Um, the background you've chosen for the wall and, and the texturing you've done on the ground. It looks really cool. She looks great as well. We don't encourage smoking though. Smoking is bad. But she's smoking a cigarette, obviously. But um, yeah, no, beautiful, beautiful work. Nice rendering, nice texturing. She looks great. Again, all, always lovely work from you, Android Lust. You really do character work. You, your character modeling and texturing is always outstanding. This is beautiful. Really, really lovely. Yeah, it is, as Hellforge says, it's a great character. And he's done a beautiful job at um, 
but the, oh, the like the, the texturing the modeling the lighting it's all really nice he always seems to pick really uh, interesting silhouettes for his models as well uh, really interesting looking silhouettes and uh, always really nice uh, composition for the for the render I love it looks great Andrew does says I posted the wrong image but I didn't want to take it back <laughs> I don't know what, what I, I like this. I, this looks great. And it, uh, as always, Sandra Glass, you always do beautiful work. Um, Juzan has posted this link to the uh, commercial that he forgot he worked on. The commercial aired, that aired that I worked on a while ago that they never told me. <laughs> the commercial that aired that they didn't tell him that they aired it. Uh, I'm just going to oh, good block. Yeah, I love it. Character's so cute. That's that's very cool. I love the character. Just going to pause it so we can have a look at the character. <laughs> I'm not sure what you worked on, Jizan. Do you say literally everything uh, you see besides the fur and special effects and 2D stuff I made? Well, that's really cool. So you did everything, Juzan, except for the fur and the special effects, all the 2D stuff. Well, I, I'm impressed. I think that looks great. Really cool. So not the 2D stuff, but uh, all the 3D work Juzan did. <laughs> Looks really cool. Nice stuff. Uh, Juzan says, yep, I made the clouds in, in Houdini. The clouds look really cool. I, I was actually going to ask about that. I like the look of the clouds too. They look really good. Now the character is very cute. <laughs> It does, it looks great. Uh, did, did you do the animation work as well, Jizan? So like the sliding furniture or, or the... Yeah, was that you or was that an animator? Because that looks really cool too. Furniture modeling and texturing is really nicely done. It looks really good. Yes, lovely work, Juzan. Thanks for um, posting it in the gallery and letting me show it on stream. Actually, I want to take uh, Juzan says sorry, I did. Uh, you didn't animate it. That's that's cool. But uh, the texturing work and stuff is beautifully done, and the modeling work is really nicely done too. The whole thing is very cute, and the character is cute. Whoever whoever designed the character is very cute. <laughs> Uh, I do want to thank you guys for letting me show your work on the stream. Remember, if you do want to show off your work, uh, pop it in the gallery on the Discord server. Because I will show it off at the end of every stream, any, uh, any work you guys post. But I think we will leave it there for today, guys and girls. Uh, I will be back on again tomorrow, of course. We'll pick up where we left off here. Um, I don't think there's anything more I need to do here for the this outhouse part of the landscape. So we will either move to the other side of the landscape and we'll start setting up another scene with a dead adventurer over there or we'll jump into uh, Intermax and start working on the Bugatti car. I'll see how I feel tomorrow. But you guys and girls, thanks very much for hanging out with me and for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> you guys take care and uh, I will see you all hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> see you guys.